Greg Barrett, the real House of Baratheon here at the APA Football Club. He is the inimitable, the master replayer. And it's been about eight years since we talked to each other at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the first official, unofficial something, uh, APA Football Conference. And uh, Greg and the other folks made it happen or else I'd have been sitting there eating 24 lunches in an empty conference room. So, Greg, it's great to see you again. We've just been catching up a bit here. He is now in the Pacific Northwest. Do you want to catch folks up on what you've been doing? Uh, well, uh, I've been doing good and uh, surviving the pandemic. Uh, feel good that I uh, finally got uh, the fully vaccinated so I can go out and not be scared of catching the plague type deal. Sure. Uh, but no, I mean, hey, listen, I, I often tell people uh, about our experiences at the Hall of Fame and that that weekend was just phenomenal and i and i don't think people realize uh uh the little select group that we had there you know with jerry zajac and uh, ray dunlap and uh, greg wells uh we had a lot of good discussions during that time period and none of that stuff would have happened uh if it wasn't for you and people don't realize unfortunately you paid a lot out of your own pocket to make that thing happen that people don't that people don't know okay <laughs> and uh i for one was uh when i learned about it when i learned about it was after the fact i was all worth and, it <laughs> uh, it was uh it was it was really nice it was really nice because you gave me a, a memory uh, that i always remember I mean, you remember the marquee, you know, 66 yeah. equals touchdown. Oh, it was, it was, a, it was a, a real, real fun time we had there, nice. you know? Oh, yeah. It was, uh, well, I mean, it wouldn't have happened. Like I say, it wouldn't have happened out with uh, you gentlemen uh, there. And you actually, yeah, you dragged, you got me into the, uh, see that, uh, watch the Ravens lose the not to the Niners. That, that was the year, uh, yeah, the uh, Super Bowl uh, recap flick was there. Yeah, it was August. It was about preseason. Yeah, so it was yeah. A great tournament. I think you won that too. Did you? No, nah, you know, that's the funny thing. Greg did. Greg Wells did. <laughs> we, we were playing in the finals. You know, I had the, the, the 99 Rams. I think he was the, uh, I think 84 49ers or, or 94 40 he was the 49er team i forget which which season but it was an epic defense he had yeah. and uh no sour grapes here oh, no. if, <laughs> if if you if you remember right uh at the end of the game i'm winning and warner goes down with the injury that's right yeah. and then jermaine comes in as the backup <laughs> now check this out <laughs> I lose that game on a pick six on a screen pass because Jermaine got a 25, okay? Oh, so. yeah. That was it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that, Good that stuff, was man. That was something. Good uh, that's stuff. The, <laughs> now, and that's not even a rare play result either. That was just like, no, what? No, that was just crazy. <laughs> but, you know, I tell you what, Greg and I, we've played numerous times since in uh, – that man, without question, is the finest face-to-face -face, uh, football player, I think, it, 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 alive, walking and breathing right now. So <laughs> he's, he, he's he's pretty darn special. So I wonder what his record is. we got to see if we can uh, break into his archive. He must have his records or something. It's like, what is your lifetime? You know, he, he played all those years in the 80s with Howard, you know, in, right, in, right. in the league there. He cut his teeth down there in that league. And, uh uh, I know he's he's taught me a, a ton. He's just taught me a ton, and uh, so yeah, it's it, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to using some of uh, his lessons. I just uh, joined Jerry's league. Oh, nice, uh, good. The, uh, the American wow. Card Football League. So this will be my first season uh, coaching. Now, 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 check this out. Now you know me being a, a, a diehard Jets fan, right? Yeah, yeah. The team that I got that I inherited is the New England Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh. You know what I mean? That's you want to talk about getting kicked, you know where, right? Uh, well, now <laughs> you're gonna stock it with Jets, though, right? <laughs> yeah. So. You know, but I hey, listen, I, I'm looking forward to it. I love playing face to face. You know, I uh, it, I love Apple football, but without question, you know this. I'm speaking to the choir here. Face to face, Apple football 
without question is the greatest game. No, 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 no other game, no other game engine, no other game within the app of suite mm -hmm. can compare to Apple football face to face. It's the best. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, a consensus yeah. for sure. Yeah, hands down. <laughs> So that's your that's kind of big news. I mean, that's uh, what uh, made you did they was it like Well, they had an opening and it had a guy drop out, I guess, and uh one of the guys posted a thing on BTN between the lines, you know, uh, about how they got an opening for it. And you know, I start I started thinking about it. I said, "You know, I've done a lot of things within the uh within the hobby. Uh one thing I haven't done is that." And uh Listen, I'm a, I'm an Apple football player now. You know, people think I just do replays and play solitaire, but that, that's not the case. You know, I mean, I, I I do it all. So I wanted this one experience that I haven't had, and uh, I wanted I wanted to take advantage of it. And Jerry was nice enough to let me in his league, so uh, uh, nice. I think it'll play out just fine. So this is this is uh, Jerry Zajac, National Card Football. Yeah, do you remember cool. when he yeah. did the demo at yeah. your event that you did at the Hall of Fame? Yeah. That's the league that I'm going to be in. Awesome! Right, 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 right. And uh, that's uh, have they changed Skype. their method much at all? Or because I know you still had I was mentioning you still had the uh, their method posted uh, their original method posted. You know the play call. It's I, really efficient system was. yeah it is it's it's a real slick system and I, and I did have it posted but now i just got their their the link to their to the the league site you know on on uh on my site ogard 62.net so right. uh but yeah i'm really looking forward to it uh the the uh official play starts the first week of august and then it'll be a, it'll be a joy wow interesting interesting yeah. so uh, and it's a uh, how many games is it the full 16 game season or uh, you know I, I God geez you know, make me sound stupid I think it's 10 or 12 games it's not the That's full good. 16 games okay uh, but I think yeah, yeah, I feel bad not knowing that answer off the top of my head but I think it's 12 or so it's yeah it, but it's a listen it'll be it'll, it'll be it'll be a good time interesting we just had our draft we finished that uh, I don't know about a month ago and uh now most of us got our teams cut down to the forty-eight, so uh, it's 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 pretty pretty slick. So you know that's that's interesting. That just I think they're the oldest league in Apple Football League in the country. They go back to eighty-one, unless Ray's. Uh, well, Ray's is that Sun Coast League that he was doing. That's that's the oldest. This league yeah. I think's been around like eight years or so, and okay. then they have they have the ACFL the the ACFL, then they had the NF. They have the they have two different card leagues right. and uh, Skype leagues, and I, this is the I guess the younger one of of the two. Ah, okay, interesting. But uh, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to give it a try, and uh, hey, listen, any time that you could socialize with more guys that have a passion for Apple football, I mean, hey, for me, that's that's the better. And uh, Jerry's been really good to me. We we've, we've played a few games. Uh, via Skype to get me used to the mechanics of how the, the league play will go. Sure. And, uh, well, I mean, you, you've met, you know, Jerry, you've met him. Yeah. He was there at the thing and he's a first class guy. I mean, I can't, uh, can't, uh, speak highly enough of the fellow. Oh, there's some folks there, uh, Jerry and some others who need to be in the uh, Apple hall of fame for sure. Oh, it, folks. It's a long <laughs> list. Yeah. It's a long <laughs> list. You know, our, I'm, I'm uh, looking at one guy right now that should be too. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole NCFL league. I mean, that really is uh, is uh, that's they they were well ahead of the curve there, and and I hope they've. I mean, clearly, I mean, they've been going on and doing it. So that's diligence, and I think the Seahawks are the two time champions. I believe, yeah, if I, I recall so, right. Yeah. If you check out their live, I'll put the uh, link uh, to their uh, league in the description. I think it's jzajack dot wix site, uh, something like that. But we'll put yeah. it in there. Um, that is awesome. That's kind of a breaking news there, Greg. But yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. Yeah. You, gotta, I mean, you, know, you always got to branch out, you know. For sure, for sure. Yeah. And that's, you know, it, it, so many people we talk about, oh, it's video game is so much easier to set up. And it's it's like really, you know, and you get the franchise mode and this, like this is a franchise mode. It's more, far more interesting, I think. Instead of sitting in a screen, it's like, here's your pack of cards. How hard is that to set up? Dish them out how you do and do this thing. I mean, it's, you know, your franchise mode 
in cards is a i think an easier setup and it's you know and especially now you're talking about the pandemic not to bring real life into this stuff uh too heavily but uh you know i know children want to get back to socialization and they want to be face to face with folks and what better way to do that with a card game right now and you know in the music world people want to get out and uh but you know sure science conferences I, I mean this is i think yet another big window of opportunity for the this co- game company and maybe all game companies and certainly players is like hey let's get together take the board game out and go and just you know yeah. play some there's a, you know there's a lot of guys that are just doing pickup games jeff uh like you remember tebow from the, all the conventions yeah you know he's uh he came out He's playing games on uh, on YouTube uh, via yeah. Skype and uh, uh, other platforms and uh, recording it on YouTube and stuff. I mean, there's uh, it's it's uh, it's a great way to uh, stay connected. Uh, it is, you yeah. know, throughout the community. I wonder if now actually about the community. I did want to touch on that because you know after after Canton. You know, you started doing the 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 football proper finally with with Ray down at uh, in Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Alpharetta, technically. Alpharetta, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I'm just curious if there are like any records out of there. As I was talking to Bill Lilly about it, he was like absolutely thrilled that he lost to you. <laughs> Bill's the class guy, man. <laughs> oh man, we 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 had a lot of fun, Bill and I. You know, he 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 he's a fun guy just to talk to in general. You know, with his experiences and where he's living and all that. You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Bill's quite the character. Uh, but yeah, that was a fun game. Uh, I tell you what, though, between you and I, I felt a little bad for Billy. You know, he uh, had that uh, old Dallas team going against my 93 Cowboys. And with that 70% Aikman card, Jeff, it wasn't even fair. <laughs> Ooh, that's, that's gonna, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Well, now that's interesting. So, what he he had one of the older sets then? I yeah, guess. Yeah, I, I think it might even. Be, I think don't hold me to it, Jeff. I think it was the '66 Cowboys. I think. Wow. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. And you know, with Bullet Bob and and, yeah. and listen, uh, Meredith had a great card and all that. I think he had double twos, but you don't hit those numbers. You know, you're dealing with what a fifty percent card. You know, going against the a seventy percent card i'm carving them up right <laughs> yeah it's kind of hard to well now that's interesting because i that that brings up uh so i remember one time art carter lived around here and we did a pre versus post master team using the different boards the different goal line rules stuff like that i wondered and this kind of tied into i was going to ask you as we were i was looking at bill's Lily, bill Lilly's write-up of his uh actually game four i think of uh yeah it was game four of the 72 dolphins against i the just Jets. read that with yeah. the jets at shea stadium right yeah, I just I, read it was a, he, he writes it was a great write up. I even commented. Yeah. I said I felt like I was sitting at Shea Stadium reading this. You know, totally, totally. And it came out. I mean, yeah, it came like, out good. You know, twenty three seventeen. The real score was twenty seven seventeen. How much more accurate yeah. do you want? But you know, he was talking about uh, how you have to call. You know, he's calling nickel and dime. It's like, but that's a seventy two team. How do you? You know how? And I, I that because so much talk is about the master game. The master game. How do you kind of? reconcile you know these pre say 78 77 teams with having to use the master game rules like a nickel to drop an index and you've got that fifth db on the field whereas before you had the eight slash 16 point secondary reduction for the i mean how do you reconcile that for accuracy for your records all that good stuff well you touched on something that's kind of a uh hot button issue i don't think Ian, you didn't even realize it uh, yeah uh during my replays uh even when i would play 60 style s- sets uh of course they didn't have you know nickel and dime in 1960 the eagles they really created the nickel defense mm-hmm. okay? okay and but it was very rarely ever used okay and you know really the dime didn't really come into effect until the late 70s right. you know and you get to the early 80s and everybody's nickel and diamond okay on that but when i was playing the old seasons or i'd play the new seasons i would still use the reduction rule okay associated with the you know anytime the defense inserts the fifth defensive back it lowers the receivers 
grade by one, you know, unless the receiver's got an asterisk, okay, as you well know. Uh, But the cards that are currently being created and sold by the company, Jeff, uh, don't take into account that normalization. Mm, So if you use the reduction rule, your stats are going to be skewed during a season replay. Your completion percentage will be lower by about 3%. Okay, I was replaying the 2015 NFL season a couple years ago, Mm -hmm. and my percentage, completion percentage was 3% lower. Now, you have to realize something. I use the master game rules for all the replays that I've ever done. Okay, so I used all the bells and whistles, i.e. the reduction rule and all that. Well, come to find out that uh, without sharing names or anything, because that's something I won't do, uh, no. but speaking to the individual that creates the cards, now they are they don't account for that. Okay. So moving forward, I eliminated using the reduction rule. Now, if you're doing a pickup game or you're doing a face-to-face game, or you're a league rule, league player, all that, yes, you're using the reduction rule, you use it all, because it's real football. It's all the bells and whistles. If you're a guy like me that plays 256 games of the 256 regular season you know, schedule, mm-hmm. your stats are going to be skewed. So when I did 2019, I just replayed the 2019 NFL season, mm-hmm. and I did not use it. My stats were perfect. Spot wow. on. Interesting. Okay. So that's just a tidbit uh, that a lot of people aren't aware of. Interesting. Very good to know, for sure. For sure. When you say that your stats are, you know, spot on, I mean, is there like a plus? I mean, you're a numbers guy, military yeah. analyst here, former, retired. Um, and, uh, you know, what is that, you know, plus or minus that you f- you will say that is accurate? I'm allowing well, uh, if, if if the league's cumulative average was, I'm making up numbers here, 58%, Greg Barrett expects to be 58%. Okay. Okay. And it should be because, you know, over, you're going to have teams always overperform. You have teams underperform. The only way that you could truly understand uh, the quality of a set is by the cumulative average of of the sets all all the teams put together and you know like during the um 2015 replay uh don't hold me to the the numbers but it was three percent lower okay and that's that's too big of a of of a gap it should be you know should be pretty darn spot on or if not if not 51% 51% off, you know, I, I live with that. You know what I mean? It's, sure, it's sure. 57, it's 50, so that's fine, okay? But uh, when you have uh, 60 and 57, 56, that's a big difference. That's a big disparity over the course of time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. For sure, for sure, interesting. Uh, you know, uh, we were just talking a little bit about catching up about Mark, and the first time we actually spoke, you were one of our the first interviews on on the the app of football club uh we we kind of did the car conference call because you were using his set you were kind of his play tester really i mean oh wow i was i was yeah the skunk works of app of football there um what you know have you ever or mm, have you tested you used his sets you were replaying with his sets have you ever replayed an app of set and that he had carded like you know sure. season that and and compared the two averages sure uh the um well let me kind of cr- uh correct that uh let's take the 98 set for example mm, okay. okay you know you remember you know it's when apple had financial troubles they never produced the 1998 set right the journal created a card set for 98 i replayed that season okay, okay. Uh, a couple years ago mark created a one-off set for me of the 98 season i replayed that uh and now app has just released the 98 season about a year ago i have and i'm going to replay that you know it's okay. the same it's the same like with with 68 you know um apple never had the 68 for the new game uh Mark created the 68 
back in the days. That's how him and I got to know each other because I purchased that set, reached out to him, found out we're both Jet fans. Well, uh, you know, things kind of morphed into what it is today. You know, I mean, for now, the guy's in my will, for God's sake. You know, I love <laughs> the guy, you know. Uh, but uh, he did the 68 set. And then just, I think, a year ago or, or two years ago, he did revised it because Mark is constantly uh, refining his craft. Okay. Yeah. And he recarded the 68 set. So I did a, a replay of that. And uh, which was, it was, it was a great card. So no, now app is just going to be releasing the 68 set. It, it's not available yet, but news, news flash, it's, it's going to be coming out here real soon. Cool. So I'm going to replay that when it comes. So there's, to, I guess I'm answering your question in a, in a long-winded fashion, but I, I like to do that because I like to see all the different data points. You know, for sure, for sure. For sure. Uh, do you have? So I was going to do this uh, thing for those who don't know. Greg already knows because we kind of I cheated a bit. Uh, just kind of went at him unawares, but you know, you do that rapid fire question thing. I was going to call it on a roll, but we're kind of a uh, you know ten fast questions with everyone does that shtick. But uh, we're kind of getting into the questions anyway, so we'll just kind of go through that. Okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, but. Um, so what in terms of your record keeping then how do you have you ever posted those i mean you mentioned your website ogard62.net and you've got playing material there i just wondered if you've got that and you've got all the delphi forum write-ups uh the forum if you're not used to it takes maybe a little getting used to i'm not sure but uh i just wonder about you know have you published kind of a a quick like an executive summary of those season to season like the 98 yeah yeah you could go on my site right now the first thing you'll see is uh, the laundry listing of my replays right now I'm, I'm currently on my 16th replay and i'm replaying the 1960 season and it's the first season um that i'm doing of that where i wasn't alive to witness it with my own eyes okay because i was born in 62 okay and uh so but if you go to, to my site, you'll see all my my listings. The first thing you'll see when it, it pops up. And uh, so, yeah, this is my, uh, my my 16th one. I think I'm on, uh, you know, it's a short season. It's kind of a sprint for me. But the NFL season is only 78 games, and I'm in just finished 32 games of that. And the AFL is only 56, and I just finished the 29th game of that. So... You know, I, another two months or whatever, I'll be that'll be put to bed. Uh, but uh, I'm I'm enjoying it. But yeah, you could anybody that goes to it, they could see. Oh, and I have every stat, league stats, team stats, everything's posted on there. You just pick the click on the year, and I give you when the replay started, when it ends. You know, every stat known to man. So. <laughs> um let's see so only your 16th replay i feel i feel like that's interesting yeah but I, I, I busted a few out since the last time we spoke wow i th i thought there was like okay so so going back to this list of questions i had we're kind of out of order that's all right uh would you thought there was more or less i thought there were uh, more but uh you know there's a <laughs> you've got more time now i think so and you're and you said i heard you on the double take podcast i think episode 33 and um the weber brothers right and uh, yeah, i think you said guys, you're down yeah. about you're down about an hour 15 hour and a half to roll a game yeah i roll a game in uh anywhere between uh then i time them you know it's it's fun you know i write down I, i'm constantly trying to fine tune my my craft type deal and uh i finish a quarter usually around 16 17 minutes okay wow. so with then you take all that being said, uh, let's just say if I take my time leisurely, it's ninety minutes for a game. Usually, it's, usually it's about uh, between an hour and fifteen and an hour and a half. So I, you know, anywhere in between that window. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Now, do you, uh, in terms of the uh, trick plays and whatnot, just to kind of get back into some of the usage, a little, again, out of order here, but uh, <laughs> I just wonder, because, uh, you know, with the trick plays and the rare plays and stuff, 
does that do you how do you kind of straight have you streamline i mean if you go on as you yeah do, i i have uh for one i use locators automated locators that mark created okay and he's listen the guy is uh an excel genius okay and um so i always say i'm the luckiest guy i'm i'm a dumb guy and i got the smartest and best friend in the world right you know so i i i reap every reap the benefits of it but uh he you know we we talk all the time and uh cooperate uh, our, our our methods and with that he's able to fine tune tweaks into the excel spreadsheets that we both use uh to do our replays and trick plays are all off of a, a formula based uh that pop up and it's pretty darn pretty damn accurate mm -hmm. uh you know if i if i have a guy that's had 30 end of rounds okay the way it comes up he'll get the 30 you know if he only had two he'll get the two it's it's pretty amazing how it is. as for rare plays to me, Jeff, they happen way too much, okay? So what I do is I, I basically limit them to one a game. Mm -hmm. And it's if, if I have one pop up, that's just one a game for both teams. I mean, I don't, each team doesn't get one. They're just, just too many of them. Jeff, sometimes I've come to the to point during my replays, I'll only allow one per a week of scheduled games. You know, it just, it just had, you know, rare plays are supposed to be rare, right? Not get... <laughs> not get them three, four times a game, you know? Uh -huh. So I've changed it over the years uh, of how I've done it. And the longer I do what I'm doing, the less that I use them. Okay. I now being, I used to limit them. If you look at my method of play on my site, I had it to where it was only one per type per game. You know, so I had them broken down by, by categories, okay, this rare plays were for punts, punt returns thing, you know, and had them broken down. Now it's just, hey, listen, if I get one, I, I would just look at the other column if it comes up again. Gotcha. You know? All right. All right. Yeah, that uh, um, makes sense because, yeah, as I, I kind of recall those rare plays and these, you know, people uh, often ask you, and I think other veteran players as well, it's like, you must remember all these results by now. I mean, you don't even have to look at the boards. It's like, and yeah. you are playing. <laughs> The, the rare plays you start to almost kind of remember, and it's like, oh wait a minute. <laughs> oh yeah, there's 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 some that you definitely you know RP seven seven you know that comes up all the time you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, back to you know we were talking about the rarity and the usage and um, postseason stats. I was kind of remembering this. I had forgot. I've got so much material to kind of go back and dig through and sure. kind of refresh the mind on, but. Um, as I recalled it, postseason stats, that have been kind of a sticking point. Are they, should they be included on the card or a separate postseason card? James Harrison, Super Bowl. Yeah, not, you know, I mean, I, I'm of the of, of the Mark Zarb viewpoint. Season card sets are created with season stats, mm -hmm. uh, regular season stats, and the postseason is not incorporated into it, mm -hmm. you know. And – you know, everything is, um, you got pros and cons of everything. So, yes, you won't have that. You, you have a guy that returned a kick during the playoffs for a touchdown, you know. He didn't do one during a regular season, you know. So now that team reaches the postseason, that ain't going to happen. Or the James Harrison situation scenario, you know. So there's individual tweaks you can do, you know, as a replay. It's the beauty, especially with the card game. You could change things up if you want. You know, it's it's your deal, right? Uh, but the cards are created to replicate the record of the regular season. Right. You know, I always I always think back to the um, uh, 2007 uh, Giants. You mm -hmm. know, you know they beat the Patriots that were you know undefeated. You know that was a nine and seventeen. Yeah. You know if. You, you, you mark you cards that said he cards them as a nine and 17, That's you know, cool. and so, he carded that set, you know, because he did the 07 and 08 seasons, you know, so for, right. for that game company. So, 
Right, right, right. Interesting, interesting. Is there kind of a magic formula? It's like KFC or Coca-Cola. It's stuck in a vault somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's uh, there is, and uh, but it's all automated, you know. I mean, you know, through spreadsheets and all, you know. Interesting, interesting. So, I mean, I mean, because all of us, I mean, they've been selling the generic cards for years, and if you kind of generally, if like, if you're a word guy like me, you might be able to kind of vaguely, you know, uh, rig up some some goofy little uh, reverse engineer if you wanted a card like someone who's like a, a two point. I mean, now the card company, of course, is doing the mega, which I love, even the one pointers. It's great if you want, you know, like you and your special teams, you need those warm bodies and those cards to be in there in the lineup. But if you're playing an older set like a 57 and you want to do like, oh, I found out that this guy that was there for like a, you know, half a hat and you want to put him in there, you know, or you could use it, a generic card, I guess. They've gotten a lot better with it. It's like, Jeff, not not to interrupt you, but along no. along this point, I replayed the 93 season, okay, hmm. using the, the original 93 cards that, you know, came out in 94. And, of course, those were the sets where you didn't have all the players, you know. So I, I remember um, even like Randall Cunningham, I think he might only had four games he played for the Eagles that year that got hurt. Uh, but he didn't have a card and he didn't even, it wasn't even on XB. So I had to have Mark make me the card just so I could be able to, to use them. But okay. you, you know, as well as I do from those older sets that, uh, all the running backs, they didn't get a card. So you would either have to find somebody that had a similar yards per carry and right. use that car. Or if you were a guy like me doing replays, you took that running backs carries and just sprinkled them out among the remaining carded running backs and, you know, assumed that person's carries. But, yeah. you know, now it's great. You know, now that they, they, now they've changed it to where it's 50 cards yeah. uh, per set. But all the players that touch the ball are carded. So you don't have that issue no more. And that's yeah. wonderful, you know. Yeah, for, sure. for sure. The only issue that you got, and it, and it can – it's, it's clumsy, it's cumbersome, is if you had a guy that played for multiple teams, okay? Oh, yes. It happens to me all the time. I'm playing a game, say a fumble happened or interception. No, I go to get the card out. Well, he ain't on in, in the envelope because he plays for Team X. So now I got to go to be the pro football reference, find out what other team he was on, and then go get that guy's card from, you know, that thing. so it could, could slow up play a little bit, you know. For sure, for sure. Well, that's interesting. It brings up a point. Again, I was, you know, talking to Bill Lilly here, and we were kind of talking about how it makes you learn about the game. So it's it's educational, folks. Oh, it's absolutely. Uh, you know, it's like, who's this guy? <laughs> absolutely. You know, especially now, like I said, I'm doing the 1960 replay. So I don't have firsthand knowledge of these players like I've had for all the other replays that I've done. So I find myself, you know, on Wikipedia a lot, you know, reading about these players' bios, uh, trying to learn. It's fun because you, you don't realize all the stuff that you learn preparing for a replay, conducting a replay. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, I've learned so much about players that I never even would even, you know, never knew, you know, yeah. so it's, 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 it's fun. It's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. I mean, if, especially if you're a fan of just a, you know, any sort of, a, you know, actually autobiography or history uh, documentary type thing. I mean, you just, you go down and talk about rabbit holes. I mean, you find out it's like, oh, this guy, and it's this chain event and this team name and who moved and how these things and the conditions like, wow, it's just, you know, it's yeah. Americana. That's absolutely right. I was playing a game like I think yesterday, and one of the players' names was Eagle uh, Eagle Day, I believe. Okay, so I said, "Man, this guy's name just it just rings out to me. I gotta go learn about this guy." They come and find out, you know, he's a Texan. So I'm thinking, oh, this guy had to be a legend in Texas high school football. You know how big it is down there, you know. And uh, so you just you just something will tweak a person's interest. You know, like for me, it was just his name. So I had to take the time to go back and do a little bit of research. It's, you know, it's, it's fun, educational, you know? Yeah, for sure. Wasn't actually somebody carding high school teams? Dave Urban does. I mean, he does, he card, you know, Dave, he he, yes, he, right. he he does them all, man. You know, he's, you know. 
<laughs> it's like yeah. that's he's posted a few on my site because he's a he's a, a contributor on my site. He's an author, and he could post anytime he wants. He hasn't done it in a, in a, in a couple years now. But when he was doing, it, he'd he'd put teams that he created uh, on 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 the site, and I thought it was great. You know, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, he'd a lot of college teams. He's done some high school teams. He's done. Yeah, it's fun. It's interesting. And there's no. Has anyone done CFL? Or WFL or XFL. Well, Dave sent me <laughs> Dave sent me two teams from the WFL when I was still living in Huntsville, gotcha. and uh, I haven't posted on my site. And I replayed uh, the 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 game. Uh, it was funny. I mean, he he makes quality cards. So, I mean, uh, he's done it for a lot of years. Uh, I, I think his is more of a. I don't know this for a fact, but just I, he's more of the old formula. You know, things change over the years. You know, and uh, uh, I remember him saying on somewhere along the line, he had like 17 pages of code, you know, <laughs> that he was using to create cards. But uh, yeah, Dave, Dave knows his business. Oh, for sure. For sure. I got to dig up that interview we did with him. Um, speaking of things changing over the years and relative quality of leagues, you got to go down to uh, and and the the now the availability of the new recalculated cards. The sixty one set has been, I think, the most recent one available from Apple. Yeah, and I think I just seen the newsletter. I think sixty four. They just says release too. I mean, you got to. I tell you, you have to take your hat off to uh, John Herson oh, for, sure. uh, for what he's done with the football game. Because you remember when you were real active in, in 2012, 2013, when you and I would talk. Uh, my God, the cards wouldn't be released sometimes till November. Right, that's hard. I mean, me. it was it was it was bad. Okay, it was real bad. Sure. Uh, now, uh, I'm looking at the 2021, the 2020 set that I got from just the Patriots that I'm using in in the the league. I mean, right. they were released what three three weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, you know, in April. I mean, it's amazing how they're churning out the cards. It needs to be applauded. Okay, oh, yeah. look oh. at all the sets that they're churning out. I mean, it's uh, it's quite impressive, uh, oh, yeah. and uh, the 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 hobby is in a good place right now. For sure, at least I think so. Oh, it's yeah. in a real good place, and and not to mention all the other games. I mean, they're still doing the golf. Oh the, yeah, oh yeah, soccer. yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. So it's uh, uh getting back to the uh, the sixty four. I'm glad you mentioned the sixty four set as well, because for those who may not remember. The APA didn't even bother to card the AFL until the 64 season. There were no fives in that set because, you know, the precise. Yeah, he was, uh, he, he, right. yeah, he used to look down. He was an NFL guy through and through. Right, right. So now you've got the recards. And I think we'd look back, say, at the 62 set, and there are now fives for the Chiefs. Um, that came out about almost 10 years ago now, the recalculated. I wonder if you've ever compared or you would compare, um, say, like the 64, the original app of 64 AFL, play a few of those and compare them or if they're even comparable. The old, pur to the old purple cards. The other. Right. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if there are that. I mean, I hate to say. You know, you know I, I know Dave does it a lot. I don't have any of those old sets, so I can't actually do the physical comparison. Mm -hmm. um, I should send you some. The ones that I did have, uh, I sold, and then you know, through the moves and all downsizing and everything. You know, I mean, I went from a you know thirty one hundred square foot home in Alabama now to sixteen hundred square feet. So we, Becky and I, really had to downsize a lot of stuff. So I sold a lot of app card sets. So I don't have anything to do those comparisons with. Oh man, yeah, I was gonna say, how did you? Uh... How did you uh, safeguard your collection during the moves? Well, uh, the I, so you just kind of, I uh, hand carried a lot of it. You know, I really did. You know, I had, I uh, believe it or not, I had them all in a separate su suitcase and uh, paid extra for that suitcase to, to get it because I wouldn't trust the movers with that stuff. You know, so, that. yes, <laughs> that's right. You know? for sure. Same way with the guitars and amps. It's like I actually yeah, moved. Yeah, you got it. Those are your babies, right? You know, I felt nuts with all my football fields. You know, I mean, I got thousands and thousands of dollars invested in football fields, you know. And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Sure. 
Yeah, I mean, you've got your own Apple Hall of Fame right there. I mean, really, you know, kind of a, and there's some other, you know, with the collectors out there too. That's the kind of thing we'd really want to make things more discoverable. That's kind of was our point, you know, 10 years ago. It's like, you know, let's help, you know, and you've got, you know, right in there as well. What we did so, at that, what we did at the convention that you put together at Canton was, and, and I don't think people really understand the magnitude of what took place at that convention on that Sunday, the last day we were there when the tournaments were done and the briefings were all finished, yeah. we had a round table discussion. It was you, it was me, it was Greg Wells, it was Ray Dunlap. And I think Denny Hodge might've been on the, yeah, uh, on the telecon. Okay. Yeah. And we discussed how we could put Apple football into the mainstream of, of the hobby. OK, and how we were going to try to move it into like the convention. Yeah. Well, now, hey, listen, next next years, next few yeah. years after that, Ray and I were down there pounding the, the pavement. That's right. Had That's our right. stuff set up, you know. Now look at it. Now you got a big app of football tournament. You got now the convention reflects all the games and not just baseball. And but th the root of that, Jeff, was. The impetus for that was the meeting that you put together down there in Canton, and then I, I, I want people to know that. Well, uh, yeah, thank you. I, That's I mean, the truth. Well, let's not forget John Cochran, Rebecca yeah. Peterson. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, Bob Tassinari, who bought the journal, yeah. I actually played a game with him. Uh, Pat McGregor and Jill Tebow yeah. came in as well, and uh, uh, I mean, you know, and you know, John actually Cochran is actually I think he's from Canton, but uh, I mean, everyone, I mean, it's not. Folks kind of know it's not easy to get to, <laughs> so for every one of you guys to make the the, the hall out. Yeah, there. and the only reason I left Johnny out is I was just talking about the football right. guys. That was for sure thing. Oh, yeah. But yeah, you know, of course Johnny was, uh, you know, Johnny and his better half were there, you know, and uh, John, John John's family, you know. So uh, that's what I really learned uh, about the community was that trip I took down there. And John Cock, and we were sitting around in the, in the bar having some drinks that Friday night, you remember, at the hotel. Yeah. And uh, John Cochran explained to me, he says, uh, that uh, once you are a part of this family, you're a part of it. And it, <laughs> listen, it, it, he's right. And uh, I've passed that on numerous times since, you know, and uh, it is. It's, the, the community is a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, pretty big family for sure for an italian that kind of gets you a little weird weird out sometimes but no, it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's another discussion here no got nothing to do with that um yeah i mean getting everyone in the room i think was even the bigger goal there for me it was just like it's like you folks because I, I don't think anyone everyone you know knew you i mean you're a superstar on delphi but it's like have you ever met this man in person, you know? Well, uh, you didn't know who I was. Remember, I think the only reason you knew who I was because you see me wearing an app. I had a polo shirt with the Apple logo on right, it. Remember, right. said, that must be Greg, you know? <laughs> That's it, you know. I mean, uh, yeah. So that was, that was uh, yeah, and the the Skype uh, demo there, Ray's, uh, Ray's presentation. I've got this stuff recorded. I'm going to maybe for the anniversary, I should, 10-year uh, anniversary. I, w I hope we can do more of this. I mean, I've been scouting kind of other locations. And I know Jim Shea, I mean, around 2013, you know, there was like, that was like a summer of app. It's like where all these regional tournaments were really kicking off. We did, I think, a little summary of that. Doug, uh, Doug Schuyler, uh, Chicagoland, and Rich Zawadzki, and, and, you know, Tom of the Apple blog, who also needs to be in the Hall of Fame, for oh, sure. absolutely. Was, uh, and because of Tom, I do my website. Because, yeah. he, you know, I, I, I reached out to Tom because I seen his blog when it first hit. And I said, man, this is so slick. And Tom was so nice to me and, and took the time and, and help me, and, and he's the one that gave me the impetus to create the Ogard 62net You yeah. know, that's it. That's it. So, you know, I mean, that's it's. Uh, yeah, we just uh, joined Instagram because there are only uh, eight posts for Apple Football there. I mean, it's it's about bringing this stuff together and focusing. You know, everyone talks about Keith Avalone or Avalone at uh, play and uh, Stratomatic for you know whatever you you know. Uh, you know, so I mean that that kind of constant hammering. I mean, App is doing such great work. It's just getting that out there. Everybody, I mean, everyone. You know, and you mentioned again, Gilles. I, I caught his live stream with ID Jester. They were doing the uh, uh, Saints Bucks. It was great. It came down. Yeah. To, you know, that was came down to uh, ID Jester. Uh, uh, had to audible because uh, 
Gilles caught him, you know, keyed him perfectly yeah. in the goal. And, and uh, it, was, it was like, whoa, cool, you know. It's great stuff to just watch. So, I mean, and for anyone who's ever doing a tournament, man, document the heck out of it. Live tweet it, live stream. I mean, I hope you guys can do some live streaming of games in the tournament, you know, or at least the championship or the draft, you know. I mean, it's it's for folks, you know, who geek out on it. I mean, it's it's that's quality television right yeah, there. You, that's a, v- a very valid point that you make. I mean, that's what we've got all these little fussy cameras and digital things around for uh, sure. <laughs> you know sure. so um let's see i just want to make sure so uh da, 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 da. ah you know one question uh, i wanted to talk about one of our projects and we left a lot of projects on the table we kind of took our hiatus here um was kind of updating you know the for those who do know know again uh, may not be aware again of the ofaz sets the original franchise all-stars came out it was a set of 14 of the original nfl teams came out in the 82 set with a master game the new rules the new boards the sack ratings and all that good stuff um but they're not set you know they're kind of a weird it's like what do you do with that now and you had the greatest teams of all of the past the g-tops you've got the fans right. you know the franchise all-stars are all decade teams the world championship and on and on would you ever what's your take on those are they usable in any degree for maybe not a real they're usable oh, of course they're usable and fun for people to play tournaments on fun for people to be able to do the what ifs you know i mean you know like who would win between muhammad ali and uh in uh, rocky marciano you know but you to use that in a football uh thing yes for a guy like me it has limited value because I do season replays. So I don't do any mixing and matching of eras or even different years. You know, I like to stay within that year. Uh, the one project I did, um, Greg Wells is always on me. He says, why don't you ever consider doing a, uh, a, uh, a what if type replay, you know, like, uh, you know, what if this player didn't get injured and played the whole year or, or what happens if, if 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 Namath got traded to the Rams uh, five years earlier, or you know, just what what if what if? So so I says, yeah, I thought about it. Me a creature of habit, it's hard for me to step out of the box. You know, I says, okay, I come up with the perfect what if scenario. Yeah. I can't change who I am. You know, I can't change the spots that I wear. Okay, I'm not going to do a, a you know mix and match hodgepodge. But mm-hmm. I said. That 1982 season, strike shortened season. Right. I had Mark, he created me the, a one off set of that. And uh, so I played the entire season like the strike didn't happen. Oh, yeah. And, and I, you know, I love that season because to me, the, the Jets were the best team in football, in my opinion. You know, they, they were phenomenal. Right. They, you know, the, the mud bowl still uh, <laughs> drives me crazy. You know, I, I, not to sound immature, but you know me, so you uh, you you could probably see this happen. AJ Dewey, I'm still so mad at that guy, AJ Dewey, for for the, for the mud ball that you know I'm an avid cigar smoker. You see, so I had Mark make me an additional card, and I made sure that I put a cigar hole through it. <laughs> It was me getting back at AJ Dewey for all those interceptions, right? You know. Oh my God! Nice. That's hey. You know. <laughs> no, I replayed that season. I think I got some notes written down on it, and you know, it was it was so strange because the Jets ended up going fourteen and two during that regular in the regular season. Of my replay, they were incredible, top rated offense. I mean, they were just incredible, and Jeff. They lost the championship game to the Dolphins. Again, in my tabletop. I want to take an axe to my tabletop. They uh, they lost that game. Uh, I think it was 16. To, I, I, it, was, it was close. I don't have the score written down. And then Miami, believe it or not, they lose the Super Bowl to the Saints. The Saints make the Super Bowl in my replay. They were the third seed. They won the West with a nine and seven record, and they end up winning the. Re- so it's like all of this, this great replay, and it ends like, like dog, you know what, dog doo doo, you know. I mean, it's kind of 
take takes the takes the the zest out of it. You know what I mean? Uh, but yeah. yeah, that was a fun replay, and that was like uh, for a what if replay. That was fun. And that, folks, is commitment when your your own team is like, I got to roll through it. I was gonna. That's a two parter there. Um, um, uh, that, your most disappointing replay and your most satisfying replay. Well, I, I don't even know if that 82 is my most disappointing, to be honest with you. Uh, I replayed the 98 season, and I got the Jets to the Super Bowl. I remember that. And yeah. now check this out. They're playing, of all teams, they're playing the Dallas Cowboys. Again, another odd team that just barely makes it in through a wild card in my replay. It ends up getting hot and making it to the Super Bowl. So, Jeff, the Jets are up by 10 points at the beginning of the top of the fourth quarter. And all of a sudden, Deion Sanders picks six, Vinny Testaverde, and the wheels come off. The wheels come off, and the Jets end up losing. And that is the most disappointing I've ever been in, in a replay. The next day, I got to hop in the car and go to a con the, the con Apple convention. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I, you, you. <laughs> now, now, the guys are telling me, picture this, you know me. Ooh. says, Greg, you need to hold off and replay this game at the convention. I'm thinking, are you crazy? There's no way I could do I got to I took off work. I had to be in, in, in totally isolated in my office alone. You think somebody's going to come up and bother me when I'm rolling this game? <laughs> That's exactly right, which gets me to superstitions. We were talking, we talked about that. Will you ever, you know, you've got to roll certain games. It's like, it's got to be done all the way through or like in two parts or something. It's like, a, do you have any other kind of like, I will not stop and take a break in the middle of a drive. I won't, you know, certain things that are, you know, I think I've matured a little bit as time's gone on. Maybe I've, in, I've, in, I've improved. Please don't, my wife will probably say differently, but, uh, uh, no, uh, I really don't have anything like that now, you know. Uh, it's funny. I have my 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 shepherd. She's always she's down here with me, and she, I'm saying that dog knows more about Apple football than 99 percent of people walking this earth do because she's been through, you know, 15 replays, you know, with me. You know, she never misses a game, you know. So, uh, but besides that, that's that's about it. Gonna teach her how to play. It's like, <laughs> you know. It's like, <laughs> Throw this dice in the tower. She, she she knows all the all the bells and whistles. That's for certain. Now, do you think in the league play coming up, are you going to kind of do some mental preparation, kind of like my play calling? Because you played face to face, yeah. you've talked with you know Wells. I mean, you know other folks. Are you gonna? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, yes. I'm not going to give anything away, but <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Uh, you have to have a plan. Uh, you have to be able, more importantly, you have to be able to adjust your plan. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, when you're playing today's game, okay, the, when I say today's game, the 2020 season, the modern seasons, okay, and you're playing, I mean, let's be honest, the, the majority of the time uh, is, is three wide. Yeah. I mean, let, really, okay, I mean, if you... you going to put a percent on it, 75% uh, time, you're probably in three wide, you know, four wide. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, on, on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, you know, you're, you're living between nickel and dime, you know, and uh, you have to be able to make adjustments. You know, you have to be able to uh, understand the nuances uh, well. Um, the key thing is to understand the coding on the on the individual players' cards to be able to have the flexibility during audibles, okay, especially to even though it might be just that one, you know, you get one audible per quarter, you know, I mean, just to be able to make that one perfect call, you know, to to have that coding to be able to switch from a, a, a three wide to a two tight end, you know, with the same personnel. It's just stuff like that, you know. For sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Are there any, uh, I run into this because, you know, even with the old boards, which are, I, I, I'm not going to go into the, the whole, I think there's a master game before the master game, but that's another right. discussion. But uh, um, I feel like because, you know, you, you come 
come and go for someone like me who kind of you know veers around on it but uh you know you kind of got to make sure it's like I, and you see me on some of my replays that i did it's like i'm just i'm going through the whole play twice to make sure i've got the call right right Do you have, is there any allowance for challenges in the uh in the league like two challenges uh, order, uh, I, I, I don't know yet because i haven't played the season you know i don't know uh a year from now, I'll be able to better answer that question about any kind of nuances that I run across, you know, Speaking with, that, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but yeah, do, you've got, yeah, document. Yeah. Everyone at the NCFL and ACFL <laughs> document your experiences this, this year, the post, the first post pandemic conference and, you know, maybe the other one too, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, get that out there. Um, I'll even, maybe I can join some games or something. Um, I don't know, some are, anybody could do it. Like you get a third person in there and kind of call the game. Speaking of the three wides, you know, again, that goes back to nickel and dime in the, uh, in the 70s sets, even though you're using master rules. And do you, when you're talking about statistical accuracy and you've, especially like, as I recall, like late in the eighties, but really the nineties, yeah, the what, you know, the Oilers and start, you start sure, seeing run and shoot. Yeah, yeah. And these four and five wides, it's like, sure. Do you, do you do you use those personnel and do you still use the three wide or do you think there's room to add a four and five wide some oh yeah I, yeah i mean when i would use if you look at the um starting rosters for uh, i think the 90 let's take the 94 season mm -hmm. and you look at the uh, oilers uh it's their run and shoot offense yeah. you know it's the the k guns listed as you know the the, the buffalo's k guns whatever they were in most frequently, you know, and uh, I mean, people get so confused uh, with regard to they see the, the roster, especially today's roster. And, you know, the majority of teams are on the three wires or based offense. No. So people think, oh, my God, do I have to use the uh, bells and whistles from Section two of the rule book on on their thing? Yes, like, no. I mean, that's just, that's their base offense, most frequently used offense. Yeah. Even if it's three wide, you don't use the rules of three wide. You have to treat it like it's a pro set. You know, it's a simple game engine. You know what I mean? You don't, you yeah. know, there's a lot of people get confused. And I've tried to uh, squash all that confusion because I wrote, God knows how many articles I wrote. This took, and if you go on my site, Mm -hmm. You look at the uh, on the, the the top banner. Uh, I took section two of the master game rule instruction book. Okay, and listen, it's busy. Whoever wrote that, okay, there's there's a ton of information just packed within like four pages. I mean, it's just it's a wealth of information, but it's it's just busy for how that's the only word I could use to sure show how much they got packed into it. Well, I took that and really kind of put in layman's terms and, and, and wrote it out, and you could see it. And, nice. and a lot of the things I gave historical references, uh, gave histories from from my replays, were so everything's backed up by numbers, um, and broke it down to where you can understand since you've been gone, I mean, I've created videos to uh, for all the to teach people how to play the basic game. I've created videos to teach people how to play the master game. And I'm talking out of the box. I'm not talking about any Greg Barrett, Mark Zarb type innovational rules or not. I'm talking strict APA play out of the box. Okay, so. I've created all that stuff on my site. So like in the manual that I just did, all those hyperlinks to the videos that I created, they're all in there. So somebody could read it. They have pictures. They have videos. They have text. They have, I tried hitting a wide variety of your senses to enhance the learning experience. Per se. Exactly. That's it. That's it. I mean, that's, that's what it needs. That's a, uh... Because some people are visual learners, they say, hey, right. and some, you know, so that's it. Good. Awesome. Can you get in the Hall of Fame twice? I think you need to. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you know, I got that plaque up. That's something I'll always cherish, man. That's something I'll always cherish. Yeah, I mean the Rock Hall lets uh, you know let you be in for your original band and a solo performer. I think you should be in as a as a player and a coach or a player. <laughs> instructor. 
Yeah, yeah I'm just happy that uh, I'll never forget the day we went in. It was special. Ray Ray Dunlap and I went in the same class, and Greg's the one that uh, introduced us. So it was kind of like a, it was a really a, it was a football uh, oriented uh, day, and it, it was sad too because that was the year Howard passed. So I remember when we started off, we start with a moment of silence for for Howard, and uh, which is. Proper. I always tell people if there was a, a, a Mount Rushmore of Apple football legends, okay, uh, I think Howard's George Washington. You know, I, I think you know he he would he would man that 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 spot. Mm-hmm. We got to, I got to talk to him one time, and I really regret that uh, he wasn't. Uh, more people hadn't interviewed him in his uh, you know after the Apple Journal and all sure. that. I mean, that's. Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's you can't say enough about his. I mean, he's yeah, his contribution is uh, it. was incredible, you know, you know and and kind incredible. of Greg Wells's mentor. I mean, he played, yeah, in that he was, he was, yeah, dear, dear friend and, and mentor, yes, all right. All right. So, are you planning to get down to the convention this oh, year? Yeah, I got my flight booked already, I got rooms already reserved. I'm hoping to see you there, my friend. Oh yeah, that's right. I may drive. I have to see what's going on. Uh, actually, it's yeah, mm. interesting. We'll, we'll roll out the red carpet for for you, my <laughs> friend. When a legend walks through the door. Yeah, right. Servants' entrance. I go, go in the dumb waiter or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it is. It's a, that it brings up a good point because it you know, ten years ago it was actually my first ever APA con- conference. The, uh, yeah, down in Lancaster. Right? Yeah, it's like oh wow. I mean, it's like a it's a while if you've never been. If anyone is on the fence for whatever reasons, I mean, health, I can understand, but I mean, it's a, it's a totally goosebump kind of experience. If you never, it really is, and, and you know, Jeff, now it's, uh, it gets, just keeps getting longer. I mean, I matter of fact, I'm leaving. I'm taking the red eye flight out of Seattle, and I'm getting into uh, Atlanta like at six in the morning on Wednesday. Okay, I take an Uber down to the hotel at, at eight, and I'm trying to coordinate with Pete. Uh, to pick me up at because he always gets in early to go to see John and pick up the goodies that you know you purchase uh, you know and sh- shoot the you know what the breeze with the uh, John at the uh, app at the headquarters and I tell you what it's really slick the shop he's got there it's beautiful nice. it's well decorated it's it's, it's really uh, cool being there. I always enjoy it and, uh, and but it, it keeps getting longer and longer I mean so I get to you know. You remember when you would go to the convention the first time, you know, it was Friday. You had the Friday yeah. night dinner and, and the wow. Hall of Fame inductions and then the tournament on Saturday. And that was really it. You know, now, yeah. you know, you get, uh, you know, the, the, the home run derby and the football tournament and, 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 and hockey and, and uh, soccer all going on on Thursday. You know, heck, we start playing some on Wednesdays now. It's it's. It just it just keeps growing. It's fun. I, as long as I'm alive, I'll I'll make that trek down there because it's just wonderful. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 actually and and you know speaking again of the, all the things John Hurston's done, he's resurrected. And I I lived in uh, East PA uh, for seventy six to seventy seven, kind of like nine months, and I never got. A, I wasn't in the. I was just getting into sports and. Uh, and, uh, you know, Lancaster wasn't that far away, but I mean, that's the legend. You talk to folks about app. It's like, you, when did you start and how many visits did you make to Lancaster? What was your road trip from Canada or whatever, Buffalo to go to Lancaster and get these cards? And now he's got the shop. It's like he's resurrected the actual experience of dropping by. Right. I mean, that's kind Absolutely. of the, it, 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 and anybody that, that gets down there, you know, that's an app player. They pop in to see John, and it's always that unique experience. Because for one, is his like I said, his office is really slick. They got it really well done. He's got a good sized warehouse there too in the back, you know, for all the product, and that's quite impressive. You know, and me being a logistics guy too, you know, that was uh, nice. Nice to see how they did their business. But uh, it's funny, and Greg Wells uh, gave this to me, and I, I mean, I got nothing but love for greg he in the old headquarters there uh they had a i got it on my wall right outside of my office it's the first thing you see when you walk in and it was a wall street journal uh article that sites had 
custom framed and i mean it's it's large i mean it's like interesting very large. and what it what it what the article was is a wall street journal article that says you too can beat the 1969 new york jets okay it was written right after the jets won the super bowl and it was it, it was the it's it's a great article and it has all the the the, 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 the coin uh, memorabilia what happened was when lancaster closed down when apple closed down uh roy langham got got the this artwork okay right. you know roy so, you know that, that's an icon okay well roy gives it to greg wells well greg wells sees that because of the storyline and because you know I, I happen to play a little bit of apple football and i happen to be a new york jets fan just a tiny <laughs> bit right uh he says greg this is perfect for you and uh he was nice enough and he sent it out for me they paid for the, the even the, the postage to get here and uh, I'll, I'll have it to the day i die i mean uh, unless he wants it back and i gotta give it to him you know <laughs> uh, i try to run from him you know before i do <laughs> that you know but uh turn the it, camera it, around it, show that? It, it's beautiful can you turn your camera around real quick i, I, I don't know if i can take it uh no, not if it's too it, weird but yeah but you should take a photo of that if you haven't yeah, read an article it, it, it's, cool. it's it's something i will and i'll send it to you so yeah, I would, I would, yeah, I would like to be in Atlanta. I guess that's uh, you know it'd be interesting to do a bunch of interviews. And you should, just, man. Just set up a nice little, uh, nice little setup in the office there, and bring in all the Hall of Famers and get that stuff online. Um, just a tip, pro tip. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see, um, dice towers. I was going back to again to some of the projects we were looking at and trying to you know look at all the the uh, the. Um, Custom fields, and I just saw another company, I'm sh Michigan and Turnbull's doing some fields. Yeah, he does some beautiful ones he creates, huh? Yeah, those yeah. dice towers are beautiful. Those baseball fields, yeah, yeah, just beautiful. Just curious, you use a dice tower? I like used to. I used to. Yeah. I don't, okay. I only time I use it now, Jeff, is when I'm playing Skype, uh, you know, for, you know, and I'll do, because you can need it for league play. Right. So I'm glad I have it, uh, thing, but uh, I don't use it no more. Uh, Really? I'll use it with just a roll of dice, or I just use uh, electronic dice half the time now. Oh, I change it up constantly. I, you know, when you play as many games as I play, mm. you gotta tweak it to keep it fresh. So I recycle a lot of things to, and I'm always constantly trying to improve and do different things. You know, to, you know, I, I take the my my work experiences. You know, implementing the the quality type for stuff okay and implement it that into the into the hobby you know so i'm always trying to refine my techniques and and, and make things better yeah for sure for sure i mean that's it yeah it's, i was just gonna say um in terms of like the dice tower usage and some of those outcomes and you know the way the skype method works you know you call your you know you get you know first 10 20 number right. plays you're you know you're you're it's all there um, I just wonder if there's anything uh, in terms of like the weird rolls die, you know, the dies like halfway there or, you know, if there's anything in the die dice tower that you've ever uh, any advice for designing a dice tower in your setup that you actually, you know, you avoid any of those weird, you know, hangers or dips. You or know, the only thing and I can't give you a, a, a great answer, but the only thing I could answer from my experiences is the size of the dice that you use. Mm -hmm. You know, the dice tower I got was, matter of fact, I think I got it from your site. It was from the guy on Etsy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Okay, and I think I got the original link from your Facebook page. Interesting. And so, and the guy does great work. But uh, it, I went and bought a bunch of dice, casino-style dice, Okay. OK, and then I used some or, or the, the, the app of dice because, you know, they got a couple different sizes. Uh, but the thing I've noticed is because I when I was using the dice tower, I was using multiple dice, not just two. But I might be throwing six dice in there because they would all mean different things. You know, one might be the Fletch rating. One might be for the offensive index finder system. You know, there's all different kind of things or for the receiver, whatever the case may be. And so I would I, I wanted something to where I could have multiple dice but now everything with me is automated you know yeah. except for the dice roll i want it to be now if i want to roll the dice i only want to do it one time okay okay i only want that to be the play result and you know as well as i do there's some plays where you might have to have 
you know, eight different roles, right? But yeah. I only want the dice roll to be once if I'm using them, you know, so. Okay. Nice, nice. Interesting. For the uh, electronic dice, do you have a site that you use more often? I just use Excel. So, I, you know, oh, you okay. create your own dice. You know, it's, uh, you know, Excel's incredible. I mean, uh, you know, everybody, you know, a lot of the guys use, you know, the Pro Football Helper, which is incredible. Okay. Me, I just, I'm a, I'm an Excel guy, you know, so everything I do is on Excel. <clears throat> you know, it's free. You know, I mean, it's, you know, right. you know, it's, if you got Microsoft, it's free, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, you could do anything with Excel. If you know, how, if you, if, if you know how to do it, you could do it, you know? Excellent. Excellent. So I, I, it's, I, we've, we've been at it for about an hour and a half here. I want to, <laughs> I can be talking to you for hours, but I wanted to, one last question. So we keep the video. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm going to sure. timestamp it and you all like good stuff. And, uh, but in terms of the jets, you get the, uh, great gas to know there behind you, of course, there. Oh, I yeah. wonder if, if there are any, is there a Jets season, a uh, season featuring a Jets team that you have yet to replay that you really want to replay? And yeah, there is. And one that you would avoid? Well, I'll, those are easy. Those are easy answers. Okay. <laughs> okay. The one I'll start with, the one I'll avoid was this last past debacle that I had to live through. Okay. The 2020 season. You, the, I got the cards because I'm playing in the league, but I guarantee you that's one season. Greg Barrett will never replay. Okay. Is that 2020 season? Okay. Uh, yes, but for, I, I used to have a rule, Jeff, that I would play a season unless the Jets finished at least 500 or better. Well, with my franchise history, it's not rich. It's not like you being a Steeler fan with, you know, all of those great seasons and, and all that. I don't have that. Uh, now I've morphed into I will replay any season, okay? And it's like my next replay that I'm doing at the completion of 60, which I'm so looking forward to, is I'm going to replay 1975. Oh. Now, listen, that's kind of like the sweet spot, you know, for me. You know, as a kid, you know, I was like 12, 13 years old. That's the, the, the like the sweet spot for a, a young boy, uh, for being a sports fan, uh, of course, Namath was at the end and, you know, he was washed up. But still to be able to use him on my tabletop and every completion will bring a smile to my face. Uh, it's the first year that, you know, Reagan's got a thousand yards, a thousand five. I'll see if I can get a thousand with him on my tabletop. So I, I'm really look, but I'm really looking forward to that season and really nothing to do with the Jets, just that season in general and so that'll be fun and i'm i'm in the preparation phase it takes me you know four months to prepare for a replay you know i mean i got a lot of file a lot of work goes into preparation so i'm knee deep into that prep phase right now uh but getting back to you, answer your question about is there a season i haven't played and there is is i really want to play i'm going to replay uh the 2004 season uh -huh. uh, sometime in the near future uh, that Jet team was a great team. They were uh, yeah. ten and six that year. I remember they ended the season with three overtime games. They, they yeah. lost overtime to the Rams on the season finale. They go out to San Diego and beat Schottenheimer's Chargers when they think they were fourteen and two that year. Jets beat them and then play your Steelers and go to overtime and should win the damn game. And yeah. Doug Bryan. He, you, you can't kick in Heinz Field. You know, you can't kick a long field goal there. I don't know what it is about the turf there. Oh, but yeah. I think it was – don't hold me to it. I think he was trying to kick a 47-yarder. He had it perfect, but it was one yard short and hit the hit the, 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 the crossbar. You know, it was a doinker, and they lost the game. But yeah. I really want to play that season because as a Jets fan, my God, they, they were – so talented. They had the number seven defense that year. Curtis Martin wins the rushing title. That's worth replaying it just for that. Okay. He beats uh, uh, Alexander by one yard, you know, when he's out in Seattle okay, yeah. for the Russian title. Uh, me being an offensive lineman, you know, they had a great, you know, Fabini uh, signed Pete Kendall from the Cardinals that year at left guard that transforms that line. 
Hall of Famer Kevin Mawai at center. He's still in his prime. Mm. Brandon Moore, who's from Gary, Indiana, where I'm from, he's the starting right guard. All right. And I think Kareem McKenzie was the right tackle. I mean, that was one of the best offensive lines they've ever had. I mean, it was solid. And they've had some good ones over the years. Um, so, and then, and then Pennington, that was the year he blew out his rotator cuff at Orchard Park. Yeah. Now, he don't injure that rotator cuff. God only knows what the Jets do that year because he was on fire and he was right on the verge of becoming an elite quarterback, even though he had that, I don't want to call noodle arm, but he, before his rotator, he was so deadly accurate. Yes, he, he didn't have a power arm, but it was good enough to make all the throws. But when you took off that rotator, then, you know, yeah. just, you know, he was limited. Uh, he don't get hurt. God only knows what, ha- what what happens with that team. They could, Interesting. you know, possibly win. So I gave you a long-winded answer. No, but that's, that's... That, that 2004 is the season I would like to replay. Interesting. And I, and I have, you know, uh, you know I, I don't know if I'm going to be live tomorrow, but I got, you know, I always got things planned of what replays I'm going to do. So that's in the pipeline. Nice, nice. I was actually watching that game. I had uh, I had met my uh, my now wife, and I uh, had surprised her with a trip to San Francisco to do wine country. And, I, and she let me watch the game, so I knew she was a keeper in the, in the hotel. Nice. Home. Like oh gee, <laughs> oh man, it just happens. Uh, the all the uh, AFC uh, the, the playoffs just happen to be in her birthday month, so I've kind of cooled that a bit there. But uh, anyway, that's why no, you're I, still married. <laughs> that's right, uh, yeah. We're two years in uh, in a couple weeks here, yeah. So Good. yeah, cool. All right, man. Hey, it's been great to catch up with you, folks. This is the uh, this is the real deal here. This is a dedicated man and someone you learn from uh, a whole lot and. Uh, and then have drinks with and learn a lot more. And, uh, you know, you just, uh, even if you're a baseball person, just go uh, chat up uh, Greg Barrett here in Atlanta and do get your tickets, obviously. And this is going to be, uh, it's a big one. It's going to be a big one for a lot of folks, I think. Right, Greg? It's... Yeah, well, you know, just, you know, breaking loose with the pandemic last year, canceling it. You know, we all want to, I want to cut loose a little bit, you know, and uh, get back to some normalcy. And uh, so, yeah, it'll be fun. I think, I, I hope that, I think the turnout will be wonderful this year. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, and I hope to see you there. Yeah, I, I, I uh, got to check uh, check on. I'm gonna hold you here. to it. I know you will. I don't know. Well, you know, it's uh, never say never. Um, I would love to go and uh, you know get the uh, Twitter going again, and I'll uh, I'll be uh, people will be swatting me away. But uh, and it's hard to keep up with all the uh, when the baseball gets going. It's like oh, you know, yeah, it's like, mad. Wow. Man. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, if you've never been there before, I highly recommend it, Greg. And I still get the football feel that you sent me. Thank you, sir. The Pittsburgh customer. Yeah, yeah. I that baby out. So yeah. uh, it's great to catch up with you, man. And, likewise, uh, Jeff. Likewise. Keep it rolling. So nice having you back. And uh, don't be a stranger. Yeah, for sure, man. Hey, be just uh, send me the link to this. Uh, do you mind if I post it on my site, uh, the yeah, completion of, of the interview? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, what do I do? I post it, you take a look at it, just, you know, chop a couple things up here and there. I mean, not really much, mostly beginning and end, just the intro. So this is for how it goes, folks. <laughs> We're going to the editing process a bit here, and then, uh, yeah, it's Sounds fair good. game at that point. So spread it far and wide. That is what uh, the app of Football Seed is all about. Discoverability of content, if you really want to get into media, media practice here. That's what it's about, and that's how you get, you know, Share. In fact, I was talking about uh, the Pro Football Researchers Association up in Connecticut. Uh, you want to talk about those weird things like, uh, uh, you know, those weird happenstances and those guys that p- played like, you know, very little. These guys are, uh, if you follow them, you know, or I, I, they they are yes. amazing, so deeply researched, and I can't say enough about them. You know, interact on the page and just talk about, you know, I mean, don't, you know, over share and whatnot, but sure. it's good. Kind of share things like that. Anyone who's playing APA football, you know, because you baseball guys get everything. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, as, as you know, as you should. But, um, but uh, yeah, you know, just uh, that's a, a great resource and and just good good social media practice is uh, um, is going to help the game a lot as always. So, so Agreed. that's my spiel. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> hey Jeff, thank you so much, man. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks, man. You too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.